What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel and I've got some super special for you today that hasn't been done on YouTube before. I'm back here at Paris Landing State Park with my buddy Ben Malone from Malone's Marine and he is a Vexus dealer and we have got a new Vexus fiberglass model right behind me. And I am super excited to get in this boat and show you all about it. Ben's going to talk about it just like uh, the AVX video I did a few months ago. We're going to completely break down uh, this Vex is for you, uh, give you the ins and outs in the boat, outside the boat. I'm going to take a ride for it. So go ahead, do me a favor, hit that like button, comment on the video, and if you haven't subscribed to this channel, make sure you subscribe. I do more talk about baits. I go ride in some badass boats. So let's go. Always wear your life jacket. So before we go out on this demo ride, we're going to idle out a little bit. First things first, just from walking down off the deck into the seats. Number one, the seat's really comfortable. It's basically air ride suspension. Uh, I'll have Ben explain that even more here in a little bit, but huge as far as area, which you would call the cockpit. Uh, it's big. My camera gear fits in here nice. And if you got a lot of baits, this is probably gonna be uh, a boat that you can put a lot of baits in. But can't wait to go through the inside. I really am excited about seeing this thing ride. Now I'll let you guys know. People are gonna say, "Oh, it's shaky and all that." Uh, I'm filming on a DSLR handheld, so you can feel about any minute vibration. Um, but dude, this thing is slick. It is extremely wide too. My first impression: it's a wide boat, very, very stable as well. So let's get after. It. Ben's going to idle out here, we're going to take a little boat ride, and then he's going to break this thing down. All right, so obviously I was not prepared for the whole shot in this boat. I've also not been in a boat with the new 250 Pro XS four stroke and I uh, about lost my footing real quick. That's kind of like getting in a drag car and never really going over 50 mile an hour. Uh, that whole shot was really impressive. Uh, we'll get another uh, uh, take on that as well so I can be a little more prepared. Uh, one thing you probably notice uh, in this video is I'm not a big guy. I'm like 5'5", five, five, so I sit way down in this boat, so it is a little hard for me to see over the uh, console, 
Uh, but it's definitely very easy, you know, when you're sitting in the boat, but holding the camera with your hand, it makes it a little difficult. So I shot right down the middle. Uh, boat rode really smooth. Uh, these seats are awesome. You don't feel hardly any shock or vibration or anything. Um, turns on a dime. Uh, very easy for Ben to steer from what I notice. Maybe he'll let me uh, drive a little bit, but we're fixing to break this boat down uh, from top to bottom, and then we'll get some more uh, footage down the lake. And I'll put my hat back on so I don't scare anybody away. Hey everyone, Ben Malone back out here on Kentucky Lake. Uh, you might remember me from the Vexus AVX 1880 video we did back in the fall of last year. Uh, we're out here today, here on April, in the brand new fiberglass Vexus, the VX21. So it is their, seems like their flagship of their fiberglass lineup for right now. Now, as you can see, we're out here on the very front of this boat. The pickle fork front end has been a big talk, you know, talking topic for everybody so far and all the comments. As you can see, I'm a pretty broad shouldered guy. I could stand two people here forward, two beside of me here. And we have plenty of room. Cash for flipping up in bushes, if we're slinging a swim bait out on a ledge somewhere. Tons of room. That is the whole reason for that pickle fork front end. A lot of guys, like I don't like the look of it. Me personally. If it adds me more room up front to be able to stand and fish off the platform, makes all the sense in the world and it's all the sense I need to know. Uh, the fiberglass front here, as you can see, so the glass in a raised area for the actual towing motor bracket itself. We have a 45 inch Minco to Ultrex MDI on here right now. You see there's room back here if we do add a 52 inch for those guys, like for us on Kentucky Lake, that like that kind of longer shaft trolling motor for those windy days. Uh, then kept similar with the the AVX lineup where they mold in the actual trolling motor cables. A lot of guys have their trolling motor cables kind of tucked in. They're all in the way of their units. These makes it come out nice and clean cut. Everything's out of the way visibility wise on your unit. Recessed. Front graph bow panel will hold up to a 12 inch unit. Right here we have a Hummingbird Solix 12 in here currently. Your HDS 12 lives or garments, any of that would fit as well. Also on the bow here, we have your trim controls for your engine, and then also your nav light control. Here's your actual nav lights. They're actually built onto the top, your starboard side, port side, on a nice little chrome set up there. Instead of where either somewhere in the rub rail, somewhere tucked way back here, and it takes away from the symmetrical look of the boat itself. It's really clean cut. Also on the front, uh, one thing I've noticed out here a lot of times, definitely here, it's April and May, if you're out flipping, anything like that, being able to put that foot up on that sea deck and flip right off the front, you know, either side you want to go with. Either you got two people flipping front or casting. That pickle fork front end adds so much square inch wise for more fishing platform piers. You can see, I mean, I'm 5'10", 5'11", almost a full span across on the very front. I'm standing right over the trolling motor pedal. No other boat right now you can do that in. And then that's just the very front of this boat. So as we go on back to the back, a couple of things here. Of course, the recess cleats comes up, tucks in nice and neat. Uh, one little fine detail that I really like as a dealer is this trim, this carpet trim piece here. And see where it's actually screwed down. It's an actual uh, aluminum trim piece instead of where others use a, a rubber kind of trim that really catches nothing but hooks and rips up it gets hot the glue starts to come undone it starts to look really bad this is nice and clean cut here uh, of course your recessed rod buckles keeps everything nice and tight to the floor keeping with the whole theme of the vexus and their kind of logo the lids here they come up as a v a couple of things storage rods all of them are pistons hold in one thing you'll notice throughout this whole boat is the overall effort they put into of removing water from every fishing space, the cockpit area, the back deck. As you see, as we go out through this boat right now, the extra raised lips on all these compartments, others just simply usually just a small half inch or a quarter. This is a full inch, you know, from here, inch and eighth rise with the seal, compression latches again. That sucks up to the nice seal here. Gives a nice watertight. Uh, and then the actual compartment itself. 
has a foaming insulation wise a fiberglass molded box fully enclosed put anything in here rods every bit of this surface is actually covered with this with this foaming so it is not going to score up or scar anything you have right there i slammed that on purpose this latch here we're all guilty of doing it other ones you know there is no kick plate here this has an actual stainless plate here that catches that lip of that latch and is not allowed to bust up the fiberglass of the actual compartment and of course the compression sucks everything down lockable latches port side rod box everybody asks about rod storage so i don't know exactly how many rods is in here but I'd be willing to bet there's a solid, let's just count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 rods in one side. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't really have 20 rods anymore. And when we're out here, we use about two rods all day. So. Uh, one really cool feature that I liked on their rod box system is that it's just wide open. We don't have rod tubes constricting us to only having, you know, a set number of rods. Then we have to take the rod tube compartment out itself to be able to throw a whole bunch of them in. These guys go ahead and leave it wide open. And then they have an extra little step here. So essentially those rods that you want to get quick access to. So you see the normal bigger compartment here. Then you have this extra little setup right here. Anything that you want to get a quick access to, you know, in the fall for us here on Kentucky, throwing spooks around everywhere, you know, you see some fish busting, you want to reach in, grab a rod really quick, it's right there on top. You're not trying to jumble rods and just in a big wad of, you know, mess that you have in other ones. So, really like that feature. Uh, it's actually kind of a dual purpose when we get into the cockpit of the co-angler side. You'll see what this raised platform actually is. This inside compartment is actually a rod storage for the passenger side. So we'll go over that here in just a second. So other part of it, a lot of people have asked about why this, you know, the, the sea decking foam is here in the center. Two things, uh, biggest thing is we're all guilty of doing it. It's been raining we don't really pay attention to it. We go to mess with some tackle. We sit down on this bottom box here in the center. So as we sit, if we didn't think about it, that carpet's still wet. Next thing you know, We've had a long day with a bad case of a, the good old swamp ass is a better way of saying it. But uh, we're sitting here with our day box. Now, one difference is here with this day box. See how deep this box is. So it goes down in there. And have more tackling here than anybody really needs to have. So anything you want to use for that day, you got two tackle boxes in here now. Of course, the raised lip continuing on. And then also, You'll see this offset channel as it recesses deeper than the actual decking here. So it recesses down another half inch. What that allows is, is that water, is that rainwater, you're standing there fishing, that water starts to flow back. It gets into every these channels. It comes back, hits this deeper channel, automatically funnels it down to the floor and into another 15 inch drain at the very bottom. So they're again removing water as fast as possible so it doesn't just sit on your lids. Everybody, you know, is always complaining about water here in the carpet. The carpet's falling off on the inside here. Zero carpet in any boxes, and that water is removed quickly. Um, the VX20, just a quick little note, does not have the day box here on the VX20. We're going to get into the actual center console of the boat, um, the actual center rod box, center storage. Uh, now, kind of keeping with the Vexus logo. The rod boxes have the V, they keep the same look here. Same look here, as you can see throughout the whole boat, has the same edges. Uh, same compression latches, dual pistons, fix the whole lid up itself. I never had to touch anything on it. So when we get into the boat, you can still see actually this mark there for the seals, watertight, high raised lip, keeps all the water out of all your essentials in the bottom of the boat here. So the sheer depth of the inside of the center rod box Essentially, you could hold up to 12 rods in these rod tubes, oval tubes again. So if you have spinning rods, you're not going to break any eyes off. They have a divider that you can remove 
Uh, the really cool thing that I like about it is you can kind of customize it to whatever your needs are. So if you want to keep rods on port box, you want to keep all tackle in the center, vice versa, it allows you the maneuverability of being able to fix it up how you as the angler want it, not as how the manufacturer wants it. So it's kind of a cool customization feature. Uh, rod butts, some of the manufacturers have, you know, a rack system where each butt has a certain place it has to go. Here, you can take these in and out, stick them wherever you want to go with them. Um, the cool thing is, is this little keeper here keeps everything cinched down. So essentially those rods aren't going to move over and shift. So if you want to slide everything over, you have that availability too. Uh, storage wise goes, there again, everything's lined with your foam. Nothing's going to get scored up. No water to drain. You get held up in the bottom. It's all fiberglass inside. The stainless steel latch again to keep you from slamming that lid. We're all bad about doing that. And then again, the foam here on the back decking for the butts of your rods to slide back and forth, not be damaged up anywhere there. You can remove, like I said, centerpiece here. So as we step down into the cockpit of the boat, we all want to sit right here and work on our tackle, do anything we need to do. This foam's a nice easy step, it's a wide step, so you're not trying to catch your foot on that if you got your bibs on, cold. Now, we all have enough tackle and tools. We open our day box up. This compartment here, all my essential tools here. I have my needle nose, scissors, anything we need. Easy access, easy reach. Right here, I can prep every bit of tackle that I really need to. Uh, I have my line in here as well. All terminal tackle weight wise. Culling board, culling beam, anything like that is right here. Easy access. I can sit down, work on all of my tackle, not have to worry about that carpet being wet because of the foam. It's not going to hold any water. So we can sit right here, work on every bit of tackle that we need to do. And as you can see, this is a dual console boat, but this boat is so wide. But I have plenty of room to sit here and work on every bit of tackle that I could possibly need to. Everything's in hand's reach. I don't have to try to get up, go back here, get this. Get up, go over here, reach up here. It's all right here, right in my easy access. Now we get into the passenger console side. So on this boat, like I said, we have the dual console. It's available on all the VX20s and the VX21s. So first off and foremost, solid rigid console. No problem with it wavering back and forth, getting really loose. Uh, one cool feature is that every boat that has a windshield, you get those spiderweb cracks because that windshield is attached at the bottom. This windshield is a flow through windshield. There is no attachments besides right here, dead center, disperse all your weight. All the way through is a free air. So you're not gonna get trashed down in that windshield. We're all guilty of stacking a pack of zoom lizards or whatever we're flipping in there. Uh, then every dual console is gonna have a glove box. So as we open it up, Huge carpeted inside area, wallet, key, see all of our manuals in here. There's actually a dual level. If you look inside, there's an actual dual level inside. One cool feature, of course, the handle, but also two USB ports. So essentially, what we have here, take your phone out, tuck it right in, plug in your actual USB port, anything you want to stuck in here, have it out, easy access. Uh, also, GoPros. So have a charging area for your GoPro. So however you're gonna mount your GoPro, it could be right here on the front. So the other part of the console, the passenger side, that has not really ever been done before is the rod storage. Co-anglers wise, typically have a duffel bag full of everything and then 30 rods are trying to store anywhere and they end up just kind of crushing them all in there. So on the side here, there's a couple ways we can operate. So if you remember in that port side rod box, there was actually storage areas in there. So essentially we can take this co-angler, take this rod, take it all the way forward. Tucks in, holds here, or you have four on the bottom, four on the top. Rest all in. If you notice here, on this back deck area, there's actually a concave lip area for the rod tip to lay and help them keep them contained instead of where others would be sitting on an edge and be a hard angle on something to step on and bust them right here on the edge. So adds a nice gradual area. It's all open here. There is no compartments. There is no 
anything for hooks and all that to get trashed in. A Carolina rig is the easiest thing in the world. Now it is with this system. Wrap your weight up. That raw, that weight, that egg sinker beats up so many side boxes. Now, wrap it up, tuck it all the way in, lay it in there. No more of that egg sinker beating the fire out inside of your boat. Now we're back in the console of the boat, the driver's console. So one thing that all of us Kentucky Lake fishermen have wanted and wanted for years and years after all those long rides from 68 Bridge to Paris and back. But so the airwave, airwave pedestal seats. So essentially, it's an air ride seat system. You can actually adjust it to your own weight, depending upon your driver, the co-angler. Now, the, the cool thing is, is also, besides that, they still slide back and forth, depending on how far back you want to sit. The airwave seat system, you see that get up and down. This right ride in the water wise, as far as when we get out on true, true, those Kentucky Lake days that we all know about and just get tossed around this boat, you're gonna to get to that next spot or back to the weigh-in, your lower back's not gonna be just tightened up from just holding the rails or just squeezing that steering wheel as hard as you can, tensed up all the time. So very, very revolutionary system here in place on this Vexus VX21 that we are beyond thrilled to have finally on a bass boat. Now, also in the center, we've all had those coolers that never hold ice and everything there. So Vexus, so it's own isolated cooler system, compression latches. So it's got a dual cooler area, literally two inches of foam all the way around. Once this thing is sealed, you're gonna be able to hold that ice all day. So a cool feature is bottom area, all your ice, water, Gatorade, anything like that's going in the bottom. You have a secondary tray, any kind of sandwich, food, bread, crackers, granola bars, anything you don't want to get wet with ice. Can all go in this side box here. Of course, the compression latch again. Very, very heavy duty hinges. It's not going to just sling back and get thrown around. It's own isolated actual cooler system. Also, in the cockpit area, as I was saying before, the water, that's their biggest goal is to get all the water out of this boat as fast as possible. So instead of the normal floor drains that you see usually on other bass boats that are a fiberglass seat, bucket seat style, where there's floor drains you know, either in the port starboard side or on the uh, middle area. This boat actually has a 15 inch grape drain in the floor tucked right behind this cooler here. So as that water flows from that front deck, comes out of those deeper channels that I showed you before between that day box and that port side rod box, that water funnels through the, the cockpit area, hits that 15 inch drain, dump straight into the billage area so you're not having water pooled up in here. You're not worried about any kind of soft plastics or anything else clogging up that drain. So there again, removing that water as quick as possible to keep any kind of moisture out of the boat. So here at the driver's console, every VX21 is going to have your C-Star hydraulic steering tilt wheel, adjustable. The really cool thing about this boat, we've got a Solux 15 in the dash and I can visibly see everything on that dash and that screen here, where others, where the steering wheel, you know, ends up being really high up, you're losing half of your screen. This way it's designed, recess is really clean cut and actually functional, uh, others are not right now. So the dash, they keep it really simple. All your digital gauges are gonna be tied in with your engine. So you're not having to worry about all these other different gauges, it's all tied in, fuel, trim, speed, tack, everything there. Now, Vexus has the remote start here, so, Couple of functionalities with remote start. So you have their main key switch mounted to the dash here. You start, stop the engine. Uh, you also can see the four of the controls here. They're programmable. For right now, we can operate our trim with our engine. It's a two second delay on everything. Um, and then you actually have your key fob. So your key fob here, throw it in your pocket. It works off a of radio frequency. So essentially, I can start the engine with the key fob two functions, also acts as trim, and then we get into it also acts as a kill switch. So your kill switch works off a of radio frequency. Now, I'm not in the logistics side of it, the company that you know designed this. So radio frequency cannot travel through water, grounded water to be exact. So if I was to fall overboard and this key fob is in my pocket, that engine automatically cuts off and acts as a kill switch, even if I don't have my normal manual kill switch hooked to my life jacket. It allows you about a 20 to 25 foot range between 
this main module here so I can be on the front deck with this key fob in my pocket, not worrying about anything happening to the engine, nothing like that. So steering wheel, um, it's actually a hand stitched Italian made steering wheel. So very aggressive looking steering wheel. Feel the leather's got a 15 year actual uh, lifespan on it. But on the side over here, we have all of our functionality of our switches. We have our normal horn, nav lights, billage, live well fill, live well research, interior lights, accessory switches. These are blanks. And then all of our resettable switches here. Um, now, some people like the keypad, some people like the regular rocker switches. I myself am a big fan of just regular push buttons. The keypads, we've all been out there fishing one day and our keypad goes out. And the next thing we know, we're just dead in the water. There's no getting that back working again. Resettable switch diffuses right below it. We also have another two USB ports here as well. Charging your phone, GoPros, and then a regular 12 volt power source. All right, so now we're going over probably the one of the most well, most common questions we've been getting on these new Vexus VX20s and 21s is the live well system, the intensive care live well system that everybody's, you know, they've seen it as the classic, they want to know what it is. Uh, so here's exactly what's going on. Now, we've all had that boat that has the overflows. When you make that, you got to, you know, you're 20 pounds in that live well and you go to make that long run. And as you're running, that water's sloshing out, that water's just washing machine style in there it's going out the overflow when you get to wherever you're at going to the way in or next spot you look in your live well and your fish are just flopping you got a quarter of live well water in there then you're trying to hurry up pump it back in you're trying to put more g juice in whatever you've got is a live well treatment system so vexus come up with this so i see you intensive care live well system piston holds the rod the box up now you have actual sealed lids so as you can see this gasket runs full outside perimeter of this whole live well system. Now I've got it full of water right now. So essentially what this does is on my live well controls over here, I've got an option to keep it full. So what that does is that closes off that overflow. It will not allow this water to slosh out as I'm running down the lake, hitting waves and carrying on. My fish are going to stay nice and calm. So what that means is when I close that lid, and I pump the rest of that water in, it will fill it up always with the brim here and gets a watertight seal. So you can see it presses down here. When that presses down, that water is not gonna slosh around at all. When you don't get any kind of air pocket in there and that water stays true to the lid, that water level in there and the turbulence, all the tossing around, and then actual, the divider has a baffle system in it so it keeps all that water from sloshing back and forth port to starboard. So that fish stays nice and calm in there instead of getting tossed around and tossed around where when you have that air gap on other brands, as that water level starts to flow out that overflow and it starts to drop, that water starts to just jump those fish higher and higher. Next thing you know, your fish have been knocked around so bad that they end up struggling to live and uh, not gonna work out well for you in a tournament. So dual system live with divider in, oxygenator in the side research pump, pump in, pump out. There again, another stainless steel compartment latch here, keeps everything from getting beat up on the fiberglass. As far as that water level goes, you can see I've got it all the way almost to the brim here. It'll rise all the way up to that clear plastic. LED lighting inside, lights your fish up inside. If you're fishing at night, coming in from a tournament. Uh, definitely an innovative system beyond anybody else's live well system that I think will uh, my guess is it'll eventually get taken on by others and try to copycat it. But uh, this is the Vexus live well system that everybody's talking about. Easy clear lids, being able to visibly see inside. And then there again, all the pistons hold everything up. You're not having to try to hold the lid up, hold another lid up, or slide a compartment that just gets jammed up. And um, very, very easy functional. It's one of those duh type things on a bass boat is just why I know their manufacturers have done this until now. That just shows the engineering side that these guys at Vexus have. So um, very, very excited about that feature on these VX 20 and 21 models. Now I haven't talked about your net storage yet, but on this Vexus model, so essentially what they've done is they allowed this whole backrest area for a whole full length net to be fully extended. You're not trying to fumble around trying to get a net pole extended out or trying to fold one out. It's already fully extended. 
lays right across the side here behind the cooler. Easy access, pick up, grab the handle. You're not trying to pull it out of floor storage or trying to pull it out, you know, pull it out, unfold it, you can put it together. It's already very easy access with these pedestal seat styles. It can lay flat right behind the seat. So now we're gonna get into the back deck area for all your storage compartments. Once again, huge storage areas. Pistons pull everything up for you. Compression latches, same stainless steel uh, striker plate there. Now one thing you'll see, there's no foam pads, nice fiberglass console or uh, boxes in. You'll notice that floor drain actually got a grate over it. Others will have a, you know, a half inch hole or one inch hole in each corner somewhere. All those really good for us catching an egg sinker in there and not allowing your water to drain. And then your raised lip again with the sealed area. You can see there, keeps a nice watertight feel. And then same forward as the back as it is on the front. You have a raised channel and all your water hits a deeper channel. It allows quick water access into the village area to get completely off the back deck area. I'm gonna skip the starboard side storage compartment. It's very, very similar and the exact same as your port side. Get right into the billage area in the back where your batteries are all located at. Once again, piston pulls everything up. Right out of the gate, you can see it's very clean back here, very well organized, weight distribution, very, very thought of. Um, first things first, four battery, 36 volt trolling system, all in their own individual battery tray holders. Four bank, dual pro professional series, 15 amp per bank charger. Now, one thing you can see is your power pole pumps. Instead of where we're having to take up space, they have a nice little compartment recessed behind your charger for your power pole pumps. Tucked down, nice and neat. No hoses ran all the way across battery for hydraulic fluid to get all over the back village area. So, very easy access though. Removal of four screws allows you access to your power pole pump for service and maintenance. Next thing, standard. It's a battery switch. It's actually glassed in. It's not just a you know a plastic holder there that gets knocked around. It's actually a fiberglass, very solid feeling. Battery one. We can also do our jump start system and then kill all of our batteries right here with the off switch for our cranking battery. We have the jumper system already installed, so in case our crank battery does die, we swap it right over. Trolling motor breaker recessed in here. All of your wires protected. One thing that is very, very important to talk about compared to other boat manufacturers is Vexus uses a 10 gauge wire running to the console and then to the bow for your electronics. Nowadays, with all the electronics that are on there, the amperage draw is a lot more than what the standard stock wiring is. Typically, it's an 18 gauge or a 16 gauge. That 10 gauge copper wiring to the console and to the bow allows for none of that voltage drop issue that we all have experienced here lately with the multiple graphs and everything we've been mounting and hydroways, LED lighting. They already put that extra 10 gauge wire in there to allow for that extra amperage. And then six gauge all the way for your trolling motor. It's one of those extra steps that Vexus takes. As you can see, we have a huge area right here. Multiple, multiple things you could do with it. I'm always a big fan of carrying a, a dry box or an ammo box with you know your essentials channel locks zip ties duct tape whatever you've got uh, or a spare prop anything like that it's really handy to put back here jumper cables a jump box it's a nice area flat nice aluminum lid there we can lay anything on and mount very very easy access around the water if you're having to maintenance anything in your boat as we get here back to the back of the transom one thing you'll notice that Vexus has done is they've incorporated the power pole bracket to actually be mounted directly to the transom. There is no physical bracket needed to mount from your jack plate to your power pole. The power pole actually bolts straight through the transom, makes it very, very rigid. You don't get that slop in a pole that you do as a, you know, you can see right there, I'm trying to push it back and forth. Due to not having that bracket there, it does a couple of things. It, one, of course, makes it more rigid when you actually deploy your poles. And then two, and most importantly to most of us fishermen, it saves you money because you do not have to buy that bracket that is $350 to mount your power poles to. We simply mount them straight through the actual transom, 
no hoses are exposed. Everything is tucked nice and neat in. You don't see any exposed hoses to get all hydraulic fluid in your back of your area here on your transom. All right, quick update. My thoughts on this Vexus VX21. That right, Ben? First off, I want to thank Ben for inviting me out here to do this video again. Awesome dude. Make sure you check out Malone's Marine website. And they do have a YouTube channel coming up soon. And uh, yours truly will be putting some content on there. But my thoughts is if you can afford it, this is an awesome boat. And I think if you'd go price some other boats, like a new Skeeter, a new Ranger, you're going to see Vexes is very competitive. Just from fishing a little bit, making about 20 casts up front, this front deck is huge. I mean, I almost feel lost up there. Uh, the back deck is a little smaller, but you make up for it in space. Just the, the, the middle console area where you're going to be getting up and down a lot is so much bigger than other boats on the market. It makes me feel really, really comfortable in it. But you know, I'm a bait man. And I love the fact that you can pack this thing full of rods, reels, and tackle. That is absolutely awesome. And then lastly, the fish care, the live well system. You know, I'm all about keeping those bass alive. That technology is awesome. and something I think Vexus has knocked out of the park. 